Hello, this is Dr. Omile, and in this lecture we're going to discuss the... Okay, so what are the boundaries, what are the contents, and then we discuss the auxiliary vessel. So this is the axilla. It's a pyramidal shaped space between the lateral border of the thoracic, upper thoracic cavity and the medial aspect of the, of the arm. So this is the axilla. This is your anterior axillary fold, posterior axillary fold and your mid axillary line is at the midline here so it's a pyramid of shape in upper part of the arm and the side of the chest it contains nerves blood vessels lymphatic vessels which travel from the root of the neck to get to the upper limb it has an apex okay and this apex is directed into the root of the neck it's bounded by the clavicle anteriorly posteriorly by the upper border of the scapula and medially the apex is bordered by the outer border of the first rib so those are the boundaries of the apex the base is formed by anterior axillary fold okay which is usually formed by pectoralis major then posteriorly the posterior axillary fold is formed by tendons of latissimus dorsi and teres major medially the base is formed by the chest wall so the base um, on the lower end is by anterior axillary fold which is by pec major posteriorly we have posterior axillary fold by latissimus dorsi and teres major and medially there's the chest wall so what forms the walls of the axilla anterior wall has three muscles pectoralis major pectoralis minor and subclavius posterior wall also has three muscles you have the subscapularis latissimus dorsi and teres major muscles the medial wall is formed by the upper four or five ribs and intercostal spaces and these intercostal spaces are covered by serratus anterior muscle the lateral wall of the axilla is formed by coracobrachialis and the biceps muscle in the bicipital groove of the humerus so those are the boundaries so anteriorly pectoralis major pectoralis minor and subclavius Posteriorly, you have your subscapularis, teres major, and latissimus dorsi. Medially, you have the upper four to five ribs, intercostal spaces between them, and these are covered by serratus anterior muscle. Laterally, remember you have the humerus, so it's basically the bicepital groove of the humerus, and this contains the long head of biceps uh, brachii. But you also have coracobrachialis of the lateral wall. What forms the base of the axilla? The skin that is stretching from the anterior wall. To posterior wall so we have what we call clavipectoral fascia around that region it's just a strong sheet of connective tissue that usually splits to enclose the subclavius muscle and then it's attached to the clavicle so it splits below to enclose pectoralis minor so it encloses two muscles above the subclavius and then at the lower portion it splits to enclose pectoralis minor usually at the lower portion clavipectoral fascia it continues downwards as the suspensory ligament of axilla and then joins the fascia of the uh, floor of the armpit. So it encloses two muscles, subclavius and pectoralis minor, and it's a strong sheath of connective tissue that at, around the axilla it forms the suspensory ligament of axilla. What are the contents of the axilla? Axillary artery and its branches, axillary vein and its tributaries, lymphatic vessels and axillary lymph nodes and we also have the cords of the brachial plexus the axillary artery what is the origin it's a continuation of subclavian artery at the lateral border of the first rib it's a continuation of subclavian artery at the lateral border of first rib that's how you answer that question what's the origin of axillary artery continuation of subclavian artery at the lateral border of first rib what is the termination of axillary artery it is major by continuing as brachial artery. Artery is related to the brachial plexus cords. So the lateral cord of the brachial plexus is lateral to the artery. Posterior cord is posterior to axillary artery, while the medial cord is medial to the artery. The axillary artery is enclosed with the cords of the brachial plexus in the axillary sheath, and the sheath is continuous with the prevertebral fascia around the muscles around the vertebra. Pectoralis minor divides axillary artery into three parts pectoralis minor not major the first part extends from the lateral border of first rib which is the beginning of axillary artery 
to the upper border of pectoralis minor. So the lateral border of first rib, this is your first rib, to the upper border of pectoralis minor. So this is the first part. Second part is below the pectoralis minor. Third part is lateral to pectoralis minor from the lower border of pec minor to the lower border of teres major muscle where axillary artery terminates. Now, the first branch has one branch. First part has one branch, the superior thoracic artery. Second part has two branches, thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic. So this thoracoacromial has four branches. There's a pectoral branch, there's an acromial branch, okay? Then there's a deltoid branch and a clavicular branch. So those are the branches of thoracoacromial. Pectoral, deltoid, acromial, and clavicular. Then there's a lateral thoracic from the second part. So second part has two arteries, thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic. Third part has three branches. Subscapula that usually divides into circumflex scapula, circumflex, it circumvents backwards to supply dosal, dosum of the scapula. So subscapula gives circumflex scapula, then continues downwards as thoracodosal. Then other two branches from the third part, anterior circumflex circumvents anteriorly on the humerus, and posterior circumflex goes around posteriorly at the um, surgical neck of the humerus. So those are the branches of axillary artery. First part, superior thoracic. Second part, thoracoacromial, which has four branches, deltoid, pectoral, um, acromial, and clavicular. Then lateral thoracic is from the second part. This second part is behind pec minor. First part is medial to pec minor. Third part is lateral to pec minor. So the branches of third part, subscapula, that usually divides into circumflex scapula that goes posterior to the scapula and continues as thoracic. But you also have anterior circumflex humeral and posterior circumflex humeral that go around anterior part and posterior part of the surgical neck of the humerus respectively. So this is your pec minor when it's intact. Remember, it comes from the costochondral borders of third, fourth, and fifth ribs and goes to insert into the coracoid process. So the part of um, axillary artery medial to pec minor is the first part. The part that's posterior to pec minor is the second, and lateral to pec minor is the third part. So the third part is from lower border of pectoralis minor to lower border of teres major. Lower border of pec minor to lower border of teres major. What are the branches? First part has superior thoracic artery. Second part has thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic. And third part has subscapular and anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. So remember, muscles in the pectoral region that form boundaries of the axilla. Pec major comes from the middle half of the clavicle, and the sternum, and the upper six costal cartilages. So it has three origins, middle half of clavicle, the sternum and upper six costal cartilages. Where does it insert? On the lateral lip of the bicipital groove, lateral lip, because teres major is on the medial lip. This one is on the lateral. It's innervated by both medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Medial is from the medial cord, lateral is from the lateral cord of the pectoral, of the brachial plexus. It causes adduction of the arm, it medially rotates the arm, and also causes flexion of the arm. So it has three heads, clavicular, sternum, and six um, ribs, and it inserts onto the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. So if it was to contract from insertion towards origin, it will cause adduction of the upper limb. This limb will move this way. Adduction, medial rotation, and flexion at the glenohumeral joint. Adduction, medial rotation, and flexion. Subclavius muscle comes from first costal cartilage, first uh, cartilage of the first rib, and the fibers move upwards, insert onto the inferior surface of the clavicle. It's innervated by nerve to subclavius from the upper trunk of the brachial cord, brachial plexus. What is the action? It will depress the clavicle and thus steadies the bone. So we have pectoralis minor from third, fourth, and fifth um, costochondral junctions, inserts onto the coracoid process innervated by medial pectoral nerve from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, what does it do? It pulls your shoulder downwards and forwards and elevates the ribs from where it originates. So you can appreciate subclavius from first costochondral junction to inferior surface of the clavicle, so it depresses the clavicle. Pec minor from third, fourth, fifth costochondral junctions to coracoid process, so it will pull 
um, the, the, the shoulder downwards and forwards and elevates the ribs where it originates. Subscapularis comes from the subscapular fossa. This is the anterior fossa of the scapula and it inserts on the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. So it's innervated by both upper and lower subscapular nerves from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. What does subscapularis do? It causes medial rotation of the arm and stabilizes the shoulder joint. And remember, it's part of the rotator cuff muscle that stabilizes glenohumeral joint. So this is your subscapularis muscle from the subscapular fossa, okay, to the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. Then we have latissimus dorsi. It comes from posterior part of iliac crest and lumbar fascia and also the spines of the lower six thoracic vertebra, okay, and the lower three ribs. Then it inserts on the floor of bicipital groove. Lateral lip of bicipital groove had pec major, medial lip has teres major, and the floor of bicipital groove is insertion of latissimus dorsi. It's innervated by thoracodosal nerve, root value C6 to C8. This is from the posterior cord. And the functions of latissimus dorsi, it will cause extension, adduction, and medial rotation at the glenohumeral joint. So it, here is your latissimus dorsi. It comes from the iliac crest, thoracolumbar fascia, the spinous processes of the thoracic, um, lumbar and thoracic vertebra. Okay, then it comes and goes to insert on the floor of the bicipital groove. We call it a lady between two majors. Latissimus dorsi, latissimus is a lady, two majors where pec majors on the lateral lip of bicipital groove and teres major is on the medial lip of bicipital groove. So if this muscle, latissimus dorsi, is to contract from insertion towards origin, it will cause adduction, okay, because the limb will be brought this way and it's being brought posteriorly, so extension, adduction, Okay, and some aspect of medial rotation. Teres major, where does it come from? The lower third of the lateral border of the scapula. And then it will insert on the medial lip of the bicipital groove. Lateral lip has pec major and the floor of bicipital groove has latissimus dorsi. So it's innervated by lower subscapular nerve and this is from the posterior cord. Remember subscapularis is innervated by both upper and lower subscapular. But teres major is by lower subscapular nerve. What does teres major do? Adduction and medial rotation of the arm. Okay, then we have serratus anterior. Serratus anterior, it's from the outer surface of the upper eight ribs and inserts onto the medial border of the scapula in the region of inferior angle. So outer border, upper eight ribs, and inserts on medial border of the scapula around the inferior angle. It's innervated by long thoracic nerve and its function is to draw the scapula forwards. That's protraction of the scapula. So this is your um, serratus from the upper eight ribs to go and insert on the medial border of the scapula around the inferior um, angle. Okay, innervated by long thoracic nerve. You can see it here. It usually lies flat on the serratus anterior and it helps to cause um, protraction, forward movement of the scapula. So remember, when you have injury during mastectomy, when you have injury of this long thoracic nerve, you get winging of the scapula. So when the scapula comes, when you tell the patient to put the hands on the wall and push the scapula, you can see it, it will be retracted backwards. So that's a clinical application there. Then you can use the serratus, uh, sorry, you can use the um, lat uh, latissimus dorsi. Yeah, the clinical application of latissimus dorsi, usually it can be used in breast um, augmentation surgeries. You can take the latissimus dorsi and use it to augment the breast after mastectomy to sort of create some um, mass or tissue around the breast region to replace what has been removed. Then the pectoralis minor, we say it's a landmark that is used to um, stage the lymph nodes. So if you have uh, lymph nodes, uh, breast in breast cancer, the uh, uh, lymph nodes medial to pec major, if they are affected, that gives you stage one behind pec minor, sorry, the stage two and lateral to pec minor is stage three involvement. So really the um, lymph nodes around pec minor, they help in the staging of your um, involvement of the lymph nodes. Okay, so basically that's it about um, the axilla and the muscles that form the pectoral region and muscle which are mus and some muscles that form the boundaries of the axilla. 
So thank you very much.